Let me take that load, Optimus. You're a true friend, Huffer. <laughs> Wussy boy. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rag, my gal. Sunday, you kissed my wife. Baby, my heart's on fire. We review Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Deluxe Huffer. Huffer goes all the way back to Generation 1 as one of the mini bots of the original Autobot line, alongside Bumblebee, Cliffjumper, and others. But somehow Huffer never made much of an impression. Maybe it was because his bio pigeonholed him as a whiny pessimist. It'll never work. Big waste of time. Shut up, Huffer. Anywho, unlike many other Autobot characters, Huffer has never really had any decent remakes. Until perhaps now. Check him out in his box with some character art. I can tell by looking he didn't need nearly this much box and I'll bet the figure headlights don't light up like this. Go up at the side panel art. See both modes on the back. And more of the character art on the slanty panel. Now let's get him out of this box and see what a true friend he really is. <laughs> Out of box deluxe kingdom huffer comes with an orange gun weapon accessory that's been painted gray an orange claw shield accessory that has been painted gray and silver a special card accessory when you peel it back it reveals a secret about this predacon that nobody knows and a statless instruction booklet and this is Deluxe Huffer in his alt mode, a construction orangey yellow truck. It feels solid with decent heft for the size, and only the wheels rattle when you shake it. It maintains much of his original Generation 1 charm with his oversized silvery smokestacks. He looks alright from the front with the cab section as one solid piece with good sculpting and detailing and good paint applications. Neatly applied to the grill work. But no, the headlights don't work, so the box art was a lie. He's got translucent blue windows, and the base orange plastic is well highlighted with silver on the grill work, bumper, headlights, smokestack, and hubcaps. But turn him around and you can see the robot hands just hanging off the back. And then there are these hollow portions at the taillights. The silver here has been replaced with a flat gray. But it has a nice diamond plate pattern, which looks nice and trucky. Flip him over and you can see the robot parts easily enough. It also gives a good idea of how he transforms just by looking. The robot chest looks like it would drag worrisomely low based on how it's so close to the tires. You may want to be careful what kinds of surfaces you roll him over so you don't risk scraping off any of the paint on the chest. But roll he does on smooth surfaces. Some of the tires don't spin as easily as others. In fact, the way the tires are laid out is one of the main problems that I have with the alt mode. It looks as if the truck cab should press down a little further. The wheel wells are a short distance above the tires, and it makes the tires appear uneven from front to back. These portions at the front seem to tilt a little bit this way, while these portions here tilt a little bit this way. So it looks like he's caving in on himself. There's also this big gap at the front that you can see through. Kind of makes him look like he's tilted slightly whenever you put him down. And for those of us who enjoy the experience of true level, that's kind of annoying. The alt mode has nine 5mm ports that you can use to plug in weapons and accessories. Though there do not seem to be any of these smaller fire blast pegs. Of course, you can plug the larger fire blast pegs into the 5mm ports. You can also use these ports on the back to plug in Earthrise Leader Optimus Prime's trailer and let Huffer be the one to drag it around. You're a true friend, Huffer. Wuss. The orange painted scrapey claw shield accessory stores by plugging it in over the back of the truck with these three pegs and these three ports. Though this does cover up all the ports at the back of the truck. The shield itself does have two fire blast ports to add flash to Huffer for his appearances on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. The gun weapon accessory will store in any of the open 5mm ports, but it also has another little trick. You can split it in half. 
Just go underneath and use this to prise it apart. Then make use of these grooves on the side of the gun, and these tabs on the side of the claw shield, and peg the gun into the claw shield to serve as the bed for the truck. They are also made of the orangey plastic, painted gray, which is a bit odd. The truck bed would have looked better if it was all gray plastic. Duh. Sadly, they budge up against the fire blast ports and make it impossible to plug any in for Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Sunday. So despite some issues, Huffer does look good as a small truck, and has enough playability that he integrates well with other figures in the War for Cybertron line. Big waste of time. Shut up, Huffer. <laughs> to transform Huffer into robot mode, first ditch the accessories. This step will be familiar for anybody who has transformed an Autobot in the past. You just sort of untab the back and fold out the legs. Take the diamond plate section, it unplugs. When transforming to alt mode, use these two tabs and plug them into these two holes to hold them together. When transforming to robot mode, untab them. Fold the gray plate all the way around, and they will clip into place in the back to become Huffer's heel spurs. The leg sections are held together by this tab and groove. Just pry them apart to separate the legs. The silver smokestacks tab in at both the back of the truck here and at the base of the robot hips here. Flip the robot hands up and you can see these tabs at the back of the truck where the smokestacks peg in. Easiest way to loosen it up is just to tilt them backwards on the robot elbows. The entire truck cab has an accordion hinge on the inside. You can see it there. Extend it up and out to give clearance for the next steps. Untab the smokestacks from the hips. When transforming to alt mode, the tabs are on the inside of the hips and the smokestack. Once you have them in place, you just kind of push them together until they lock, but unlock them to transform to robot mode. Then the robot torso leans forward. While it's leaned out like this, you can take these tires and they rotate inwards. Tilt them both until they're hiding behind the Huffer's back. Then rotate the torso back up and clip it in place. Spin Huffer's head around for the dramatic face reveal. And these gray hinge sections here will tilt upward. Push them up until they snap in place. Then rotate the arms down and rotate the elbows forward. Then you can hinge the truck cab so that it's angled down and lying against Huffer's back. In robot mode, Huffer stays close to his Generation 1 roots while being much closer to the Generation 1 animation model. Frankly, the original Generation 1 Huffer toy looked kind of creepy as a robot, but especially with the head, Kingdom Huffer is much easier on the eyes. He has the truck cab slung over his back with his smokestack arms, which is what he was primarily known for. The modern remake has plenty of detailing in the sculpt work, and the arms and body are really quite solid. All the joints feel nice and tight with nothing being loose or floppy. The wheels rattle a bit, but that's the case with pretty much all figures that have wheels. He's still orange and silver with some black, though now you can see the blue and light blue of the body and pelvis. Even the head and face seem well painted, and the only spillage seems to be on areas of finer detail like the front windshield wipers. The truck cab is hollow, and you can tell, and the shins are also hollow. Plus the heel spurs seem a bit thin, especially right next to the hollow areas that they are joined to. As well framed as everything seems to be from the front, turning him around and seeing the legs from behind is a bit of a letdown. And it seems to be another instance where Hasbro could have added another panel, like they did with Spinister, that would have covered these gaps and still allowed for transformation. And it's not like this figure is actually deluxe sized to the point that they wouldn't be allowed to have some more plastic. They were just lazy again. Boom. But Huffer still has plenty of open ports for adding weapon accessories. Leaving the gun split in half means that he can't hold the guns particularly well, they'll fall right out, whether from his hands or the side ports. So better just to plug it back together and let him hold it normally. The claw shield can store on his back, or plug it into his arm, so he can use it as a shield for its intended purpose. Again, the shield is the only thing that has these smaller open fire blast ports across the entire figure. And you can still use the larger fire blast plugs to get Huffer ready for Sunday, 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 Sunday! For articulation, Huffer's head will rotate 360 degrees. It will also wobble slightly backwards and forwards. 
Each arm will rotate 360 degrees so long as you have the truck cab tilted backwards enough to give enough clearance. And there is an internal hinge which will allow the arm to splay outwards. There is a rotation joint which will allow the arm to spin 360 degrees. There is an elbow hinge that will allow it to rotate forwards almost 90 degrees. You can use the transformation hinge to tilt the hands inwards. And even with the truck cab, they gave enough clearance for a full 360 degree waist rotation. Each leg will rotate forwards until it bumps into the pelvis. And rotate backwards until you bump into the truck cab. Each leg will also splay outward, but it's a tight fit because these gray portions of the thighs budge up against the pelvis. Each knee joint will allow the shin to rotate backwards until the foot bumps into his back. Each thigh has an internal hinge which will allow it to rotate, and each ankle will pivot inwards, as with most of the figures in the War for Cybertron line. It looks like they should be able to rotate further than this, but the pin doesn't seem to allow it. You can also disengage the heel spur and tilt it forwards to give it some angling ability, but the feet themselves will not rotate forwards or back, so you can get good posability and range of motion out of Deluxe Huffer, with a little patience and perseverance. For size comparison, here's War for Cybertron Kingdom Deluxe Huffer, next to Netflix series Deluxe Bumblebee. Here is Kingdom Deluxe Huffer, next to Siege Voyager Optimus Prime. And here is Kingdom Deluxe Huffer, next to a can of dragon meat. <laughs> Kingdom Deluxe Huffer is the modern remake of a Generation 1 classic, which is sure to please the fans. Positive aspects are strong Generation 1 callouts in both modes. The coloring is good, along with the paint and detailing. He has a simple but effective transformation that's easy to master. He's Battlemaster compatible for added playability. There's good articulation and the accessories integrate well in both modes. Negatives are that he is still small for a deluxe sized figure. The tires don't line up evenly in alt mode. The robot mode has those ugly hollow shins and the feet aren't as solid as they could have been. The arms and the truck cab bump a lot in robot mode. And would it really have killed them to mold a couple of mini fire blast ports onto the figure itself? Still, this is a good figure for those who want to expand the ranks of their Generation 1 remakes. I give Kingdom Deluxe Huffer 8 out of 10 deaths. Big waste of time. Shut up, Huffer. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell the boy and tell me I'm your own.